Hi, this week we're going to talk about how to build a fasting routine so that you can maintain your weight loss effortlessly. And it's coming right up. One of the most important things if you're going to maintain your weight is to build a consistent routine. Think about it for a second. When you have things that aren't particularly enjoyable, like going to work or going to school or doing homework or mowing the lawn, the best thing to do is get into the habit of it so it's not so difficult. So after dinner, you go and you do your homework until a certain time, then you relax and then you go to sleep and it becomes part of your routine. And therefore, it's not as onerous as trying to get up the uh, wi willpower to, oh, I have to do my homework. So routine can really be your friend. When you're trying to maintain weight loss, it's the same thing. You want to try and build a consistent routine. It lets your body know what's coming so you know what to expect and therefore it just becomes part of what happens and you don't have to consciously decide to do it. You just sort of fall back on that routine. And that's really one of the secrets of the 1970s. Remember, at this time, food is not scarce and yet there's almost no obesity. Why? Because their routine was something that allowed them to maintain their weight relatively easily. That routine included three meals a day, no snacks, nothing to eat after dinner, so they're having a 12 to 14 hour fasting period every single night without even thinking about it. And they do this day after day after day because it's their habit. So now if they want to lose some weight and they want to go to one meal a day, if you're only at two meals a day or three meals a day, it's not that far than if you're your, your baseline is eight to 10 meals a day. So that's the power of having a consistent routine. Now it doesn't mean you'll never change from that routine, but it gives you a baseline with which to work. And that's what fasting does. It gives you that framework with which you can work. And the way you want to build the routine is you want to have several layers to it. And what I mean is that you want to have different things that you do on a regular basis, daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. When you look at your daily routine, this is probably the most important because this is the one that you do every single day. So it's important to have that daily routine down. It's like brushing your teeth. You don't have to think about it and you get up, oh, should I brush my teeth? I don't feel like it, but um, uh, maybe I should. No, it's just a routine, it's a habit. Same thing with your eating. You want to make it a habit. So cut out the snacks, cut out the everything after dinner, get rid of all the snacks that you take in front of the TV or before bed. So you want to make sure that you have that good 12 to 14 hours of fasting. Some people don't feel hungry in the morning, so their routine may involve eating breakfast a little bit later. They may break their fast, let's say 11 a.m. And once you get into that routine, it's not difficult. I got into this habit many years ago in medical school when I got so busy and I was always tired in the morning. So I wanted to sleep right up until the time that I had to get up. And that became my routine. So now I don't even think about it really when I don't eat breakfast. That's just a normal day. I don't have to expend willpower. So that's the most important thing because a lot of us have gotten away from that 1970s style routine of two to three meals a day and having that proper fasting period. Now you want to add on to that a weekly routine. And for example, you may decide that on certain days of the week, it's very easy for you to do a slightly longer fast. Uh, for example, if you know every Monday you're going to be really, really busy because work has piled up and you want to get your emails out and all that, you might make it a weekly routine on Mondays not to eat lunch. So if you've already made it a routine not to uh, eat anything until 11 a.m., 12 uh, noon, 
Well, then once you skip that, you get right into that 24-hour fasting period. You might also make it a routine because you know on the weekends that you may go a little bit overboard going out with friends or hanging out, and you just don't want to be always watching what you eat all the time. So maybe that becomes your weekly routine. So on top of your daily routine, you have a weekly routine. Maybe it's on Friday nights, for example, you'll make it a little bit later. You'll shift your thing, your your eating window to a little bit later to accommodate going out with friends or something. Is it great for you? No, but if it, as long as you are able to fix it with the rest of your week's routine, then it may be okay. So maybe you won't eat until a little bit later so that you have time to go out with your friends. And then on top of that, you want to go into a monthly routine. And this monthly routine is sort of like um, just making sure that you're not piling up. So the idea is that if you leave things and you procrastinate and then you gain 50 pounds, well, it's a lot of work to get rid of it all. So it's a lot easier if every month you get rid of some of it so that you don't have all this work. I do this all the time when it comes to paperwork. My taxes, for example. I used to let it slide until tax time and it was a lot of work. Now every month I do it. So it's the same with fasting. Some people will pick the beginning of the month to do a slightly extended fast. Some people will do the at the end of the month and you don't necessarily have to do a longer fast. Perhaps for the first um, few days of the month you eat much cleaner, for example, than usual and that's your monthly routine, sort of a monthly checkup sort of thing just to make sure everything's good. And then after that, you really want to get into a yearly routine because again, there are things that happen year after year that are predictable. The holidays, for example, are notorious for weight gain. We know that a lot of people gain most of their weight from the period in late November and December because that you're going out, you're eating sweets, you're trying to, you're, you're celebrating, so people tend to eat more. Well, if you know that, then you can build that into your yearly routine and every January when you're trying to lose that holiday weight, maybe you have a week uh, solid of really clean eating, for example, or even two weeks of really clean eating plus some extended fasting to really get down to it. And that yearly routine is sort of like that spring cleaning where you're gonna get rid of all the uh, sort of excesses of that past month and a half. And another great time to do it is just before spring and summer, uh, spring cleaning, when you're trying to get ready for bikini season or you're trying to get ready for that, that, that season of athletics, hey, this might be a great time to start to lose the weight, really watch your nutrition again. And that's one of the things that has happened in a lot of religions. They will have periods of fasting that are dedicated. So during that time, whether it's during uh, Easter, Good Friday, or whether it's during uh, Ramadan or Yom Kippur and various other religions, people will do the fasting at the same time. And that's great because now you have a community, a whole group of people who are doing the same thing as you. And it's just so much easier when you're doing things all together. And that's the idea be behind a lot of the group fast that we do at thefastingmethod.com is that when people are all doing it together, you can share and you can share tips, you can help each other out and support each other. And finally, you can look for that uh, special occasions like holidays. You know, if you go in every summer, you go away on a all inclusive or a cruise. Well, hey, maybe the week after that, you have to build that into your yearly routine that you're going to let yourself go a little bit and, 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 and relax your diet and then you're going to make up for it. And guess what? That's OK. That's what it's there for. So when you're trying to build a weight maintenance fasting routine, think about your daily routine, your weekly routine, your monthly routine, and your yearly routine, and that's gonna cover a lot of the bases of your weight gain. That's the basics of how to build that fasting routine, and I hope you learned something with this. If you did, Maybe check out these other videos on the fasting tips and I'll see you next week. Bye everybody.